Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Gretchen and today I wanna to take a couple minutes to pay it forward. And what I mean by that is that recently I hit a thousand subscribers and I cannot believe to this day that I have been able to reach that goal. That wasn't even an option when I started to think about what my channel goals were at the very beginning. So the fact that I have made it to that milestone is just incredible. And I know that I would not be here in that position if it had not been for other booktubers and one in particular that really catapulted my channel and I figured that it was time for me to take all of that good that came from that booktuber and pass it on to other booktubers that have smaller channel sizes that really have good content to put out there. So if I flash back to about a little over a month ago, maybe five weeks ago, I woke up one weekend morning and I did my usual routine, which is I get my coffee and I will wander to the couch and I will turn on booktube to see what I have missed out on or what I need to catch up on for the week. And before I do that, I always take a couple minutes to look at my own channel analytics just to see you know where I am what videos are getting traction and that helps me determine you know what type of content I will continue to put out and I opened up my analytics app and I about fell over I all of the sudden had hundreds of more subscribers than I had previously had and I honestly thought something was wrong. <laughs> if I'm perfectly honest. So I kept waiting for the shoe to fall and I was like, what is going on? Well, then I just kind of chalked it up to not really um, thinking it was anything of importance, that it was just a glitch and I would be knocked back down to reality once I opened the app later and YouTube realized their mistake. Well, what I realized once I started watching my videos for the day that the lovely and talented Olive from A Book Olive mentioned my channel in a video that she periodically does about booktubers that she enjoys watching. And I was floored. I could not believe that Olive, who has a massive amount of subscribers, a massive following, someone that creates content that I have watched for a very long time, found my channel, and not only found my channel, but watched a video and liked a video and took time out of her day to mention me. And from the bottom of my heart, Olive, I am so thankful and appreciate you so much for doing that if you do watch this. So I thought to myself, what she did for me was incredible. And although I don't have the platform that she does or the size of the platform, I also follow some YouTubers that have less than a thousand subscribers. And I thought, you know what? She did such a wonderful thing for me. I want to pay it forward to some of the other content creators that I enjoy watching that I think others would enjoy as well. Kind of those hidden gems that I like to watch. So I figured that I would just take a few minutes to go over. I think I have seven or eight maybe to talk about. And what I will do is I'll give you a little bit of a description of them and their channel. And then I'll put a video or a link to a video in the description of one that I think kind of epitomizes what you're gonna get from their channel. And then if you 
uh, watch them and you love them, please subscribe. We do this because it's something that we love to do, but it always feels good to get more people interacting with our channels. We have more people to talk about. And if you do find that you mesh or gel with any of these booktubers, show them some love as well so we can help build their channel and their audience so they keep putting out really good content. So the first one that I want to mention is actually, I think probably the newest booktuber that I have discovered. And I absolutely love all of the content that she is putting out. And her name is Salik and her channel name is Show Me Your Shelfie. And I love her videos so much. She is high energy. She is super passionate about the books that she reads and she reads a lot of literary fiction. She follows book prizes. She is following um, the Women's Prize right now. So she is posting videos or individual book reviews on the Women's Prize for fiction. And she has very insightful things to say about books. I'm interested to learn more about what her background is. She seems to have a background in philosophy. She's always mentioning philosophers and she she seems to be very well read um, on the nonfiction side as well. So give her a chance. She's funny too. She has me cracking up with some of the things that she says. They're just off the cuff and she is always surprising me with a good laugh. She'll be talking about something serious and then all of a sudden she'll say something that just has me in stitches. So definitely check her out. The next one that I want to mention is Aaron from Aaron Read a Book or Aaron Read a Book. He actually isn't sure what the name of his channel is either, which I find very endearing. Now, he is an English booktuber and he has a fantastic accent, super soft spoken, and he is hysterical. He has that quiet humor. He is not in your face with his humor, but it is definitely there and I just love it. He tends to read older books. He doesn't get caught up in the hype of brand new books that have all the buzz, but he goes to those backlist books, which I really appreciate. Now, although he tends to focus a lot on science fiction and fantasy and historical fiction. He also brings in a lot of literary fiction and classics as well, and also mysteries. And I am always finding really interesting books that he uncovers. So this is a channel that I like to watch when I'm looking for a hidden gem type of book that might not be on everybody else's radar at the moment. He focuses on those long forgotten gems, but he does pull out the newer releases on occasion just to stay on top of things. And I absolutely adore his channel. And he, like I said, is so funny. And I challenge you to find a booktuber that has better thumbnails. His thumbnails are on point and they're absolutely fantastic. Now, when I mentioned that um, Aaron is super soft-spoken and he is a calming presence, when I am looking to be like mentally stimulated and I need somebody high energy and chaotic. I am tuning into the Disco King. He is like I said, he is a bundle of chaos. He is frantic. He is hysterical. He is all over the place. He roasts books like no one I have ever seen. Um, and he is honest about it. He does not hold back. He doesn't sugarcoat. He doesn't censor himself. He throws it all out there, regardless of whether it's going to be a popular opinion. The dude just doesn't care. 
hair and I absolutely love him for that. He doesn't take himself too seriously either, which I absolutely appreciate. Sometimes you can watch booktube videos where you have people that are um, talking down or very negatively or tearing books apart and they're doing it in a pretentious way. Not him. He doesn't take himself too seriously. And I love when booktubers can deliver bad news about a book with a sense of humor. If you don't have some semblance of humor or wit in your channel, I am not interested at all. I need some level of funny and I am always able to get that from him. He tends to read a lot of literary fiction, translated fiction. I can always count on him to tear down my opinions of any books that are on the International Booker Prize long list, the Booker Prize long list, and any of those other big book prizes that he follows. And he just, he makes me happy. I love watching his videos. They're always good for a laugh and I'm usually never disappointed. I say usually because <laughs> He has totally torn down a lot of my favorite books, but I still love them. Another booktuber is Ketavon from Ketavon Reads, and I really have been enjoying her channel lately. She has great energy. She does have a calming presence to her as well. She kind of... It, it's like a conversation that she's having with you. It's not her just presenting information. It's her actually talking to you as if you're in front of her and she is speaking directly to you. And I absolutely appreciate that about her channel. She focuses on a lot of literary fiction, but what I really appreciate from her is she reads a lot of nonfiction as well and she reads a lot about social issues and I am constantly getting good book recommendations from her of books that tackle a wide range of social topics. She also likes to read around the world as well. I think she partakes in the Read Around the World Challenge um, on Storygraph, which I am a part of as well. So I am always interested in hearing what she is reading uh, for some of those prompts because it gives me a better idea of what I might want to pick up for certain countries. And that being said, she also reads a lot of translated fiction, which you know I am always here for. And she just got a new cat not too long ago, so she has cat footage, which of course I'm gonna love. Now the next booktuber is one that I hope is still making content. I haven't seen a new video for from her for about a month, so I hope that maybe she's just been busy and hasn't had a chance to put more out. But her name is Kim and her channel is Kim Reads and Reviews. Now Kim is so freaking sweet. She is a sweetheart. She has this calm, tranquil presence whenever she is talking about books. She also enjoys a wide range of books as well. So she does a lot of literary fiction. Um, she does romance. She does horror. She dabbles in thrillers. She also recently started reading some sci-fi and fantasy, which are outside of her comfort zone, but she is totally open to reading books outside of her comfort zone. And I really appreciate that she does take the time to um, kind of dabble in other things to better hone in on her reading taste. And another thing that I appreciate about her is the way that she delivers commentary or critique on books that she doesn't enjoy. She does it in such a sweet way. Even if she doesn't like a book, 
she is still kind to it and she always finds a silver lining even in a book that didn't gel with her. So I really hope that she continues to put content out. Next, I am going to talk about two Aussie booktubers. Uh, the first is Curatorially Yours, and her name is Kelly. And I love her channel because she reads a wide range of books as well. You cannot contain Kelly to one specific genre. She also is active on Storygraph. She always is hosting a yearly reading challenge with multiple prompts. This year she's doing a siren based or siren themed reading challenge which is really fun and she kind of forces me sometimes to read more classics, nonfiction, and sometimes even poetry. Also in 2023 she did a um, I mentioned the Storygraph Challenge for this year. Last year, she did one for the Dewey Decimal System and nonfiction, which I thought was really fascinating. So not only is she reading nonfiction, she's reading all types of nonfiction as well. So she doesn't just focus on history. She just doesn't focus on memoir. She is all over the spectrum with it. Okay, so the lighting is just terrible. I cannot win in this hotel room. So I'm going to make this quick and I'm just going to hold my hand here so you can actually see me and not the glare. The next is Redhead Reads and her name is Beck. She is another Aussie booktuber and I just recently discovered her channel not too long ago and I have really been enjoying her content. She is a mood reader like I am. She doesn't like to commit herself or hold herself accountable to TBRs. So she is very flexible in the sense that she can pick up a book that sparks her interest and get started on it right away. I've also noticed that she tends to read books that have been released within the past few years, as well as like current books. So that seems to be where her reading tastes lie. And I love having my booktubers that I can turn to for classic recommendations and those, like I said, unhidden gems, like I can get from Erin um, read a book. But I know that I'm going to be getting reviews and content on books that have been on my radar that have been released in the last few years. And I really appreciate that as well because I'm horrible for getting hyped about a book and then a few years down the road forgetting about it. She constantly seems to be bringing up books that were on my radar recently that have kind of like slipped under the rug. So I am thankful that that seems to be where her tastes lie and she is making me or holding me accountable to remember those books that were recent uh, books that I've wanted to get to. She also reads a lot of books with representation. So she reads a lot of LGBTQ books as well as um, own voices, which I can also appreciate as well. And the last booktuber I want to mention is The Mild Rumpus. Now, I discovered his channel not too long ago, and I've really been enjoying his content. He does these weekly vlogs. He lives in New York City, so he is constantly out and about. Um, he takes his dogs for these walks, and we are there with him. And while he's out kind of doing his thing, living life, he does give quick little updates about what he's reading, what he's enjoying. Um, he is not afraid to be uh, frank when he is enjoying a book or disliking a book. And I also like that he does a lot of tag videos. His tag videos are so funny. Actually, the one I'll put in the description is the Girl Scout cookie tag. And he just goes off full-blown rant on the giving tree and I was there for it. It was so funny and like I said he doesn't care about giving his opinion and this was a great example of that and he brings me so much joy <laughs> with his content. 
editing Gretchen here and I just realized that there is one more booktuber that I need to mention and it's not that I forgot them it's just that I'm trying to promote booktubers that have less than a thousand subscribers at the time that I filmed and I would have bet my life on it that this next booktuber had over a thousand subscribers I absolutely adore their channel and I think that it is criminal that they are not there yet. So my apologies to Jess at Stocking Kafka. I adore her channel. She is so sweet. She is another Canadian booktuber. She always has the sweetest demeanor. She has the kindest things to say about books. And if she doesn't like something, she's not afraid to voice her opinion about it, even though it might be unpopular. I love the fact that she does these little vlogs sometimes, so we're not just getting book content. Um, sometimes she'll take us out and about in the streets where she lives. We always get little glimpses and peeks into her life with her dogs, and she also has these really funny bloopers that she'll put at the end of each of her videos, and they just crack me up. She just seems so down to earth, and she just genuinely seems like a wonderful person and I am so sorry Jess that I forgot to mention you initially but I made it right and I certainly hope that we can boost you over those thousand subscribers very soon. So there you have it. Those are the lists of some of the newbie or newer, lesser known booktubers that I love to watch. I hope that this video gets them some new subscribers and gets more attention to their channels. And I absolutely have to thank Olive again for her taking the time to mention my channel on one of her videos and helping me to grow my channel. It means the world to me and thanks again from the bottom of my heart. And thanks to all of you that have uh, been here with me and continue to support me. I appreciate all of you as well. And until we read again, bye.